a Canadian Radio Sanctuary podcast. A lot of general stuff, first of all. How many dates a year, roughly, would you do? Well, the last uh, two years, we've done 494 days. So we've been on almost 500 days the last two years. And we've been averaging since 89 around 245 days a year. So we're working hard. And it's been fun. You know, it's been a lot of fun. I started writing songs again and back in, oh, I guess, 88, I started writing again. And uh, it had been a lot of years since I had written any songs. And uh, so I said, well, where's this coming from? And I said, well, let's, uh, once I got the album, I worked on the, this album for about three years. And fi I finally got it done. And then we went back to work real hard. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun. So I'm going to keep working till I break it back through. Now, watching the show today was a great show, and kept thinking, I hope you do I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, because that was the one that I first heard by you. And uh... Well, yeah, I'm So Lonesome is a song I did for my dad, and uh, uh, it's, he, he, one of his favorite all-time artists was Hank Williams. And, uh, you know, this is, this is fairly consistent, lots of entertainers, uh, you know, they, their first inspirations were, were, had something to do with Hank Williams. I didn't really love, you know, I, lo I liked country music, but, uh, and I liked Hank, but one, another one of my dad's heroes was Ernest Tubb, and I just couldn't sing, the Ernest Tubb stuff was just uh, something I didn't, I didn't love, but I loved Hank, so anyway, he, he asked me when I had a chance to cut my first album to uh, record something country, and, uh, and I'm glad I did, because it was, it was my first hit, and it really was the reason probably why Mama was a hit, and Billy and Sue was another thing. Now, when Ray Charles did Georgia My Mind, and you did what was referred to, at least now, as his country album, but yet there was the pop R&B mixed with the country, and I, I sense you're coming from that same direction. Yeah, I think uh, you'll, you'll notice with the Ray Charles thing, maybe, it, and it's, and it, uh, not that I'm trying to say I'm like Ray Charles, but it's what I do, too. I can record l lots of different genres, I guess, but, you know, Ray sang the country album, but he sang those songs the same way. He sang everything. He, he sung everything else. He approached it with just his feelings and his style. He, he didn't try to sing country or anything like that. And that's really, and that's what I do. No matter what I'm recording, if it's gospel or uh, R&B or country or whatever we're doing, I just approach the song the same, basically the same philosophy every time. Just to sing with my feelings and don't try to, you know, do anything to change the sound of my throat at all. Just let it go. When Mighty Clouds of Joy came out, I think it was about 20 years ago, roughly, was that the first single that was uh, Christian-oriented that you uh, released? Well, you know, I don't I don't think so, but, oh, oh the one, that, the first one for me, uh, let's see, yeah, yeah. was it before Dr. Guy? Yeah, it was before Dr. Guy. Yeah, uh, that was probably my first gospel song, and uh, we were inspired to, uh, Robert Nix wrote that song, um, he heard a record by the Mighty Clouds of Joy, on a gospel station and I just thought it was a great idea and he wrote the song. There are people like Paul Davis when he released Do Right about 11, 12 years ago that uh, falls into that same area where it's a pop, it becomes a hit, yet it has a gospel feel to it. Yeah, Paul is, a, is probably probably the best at writing that kind of song. Although, you know, I think Raindrops was might have even been the first uh, spiritual statement that I made in, in my career. You know, Raindrops has a real gospel message in the lyrics uh, and Hal David wrote a lot of songs like that and uh, the follow-up to Raindrops Keep Falling My Head was uh, everybody, uh, Everybody's Out of Town which was another thing like you know talking to talking to God about hey Noah you know send some people down everybody's out of town so those are probably further this was the first just overtly gospel thing. How did it come about that you did Raindrops and it was tied in with the Butch Cassidy movie? Well, he wrote wrote the raindrops for the movie. They he had they had shopped it around some. He wrote it really for Bob Dylan. That's one of the kind of little quirky the quirky notes were for Bob. And and uh, uh, Bacharach did that a uh, Bert did that a number of times because he really loved the way uh, Dylan phrased. So he would think about Dylan a lot a lot of times when he was writing. Uh, anyway, Bob turned it down for whatever reasons, and uh, they called me. I was doing a tour in the Midwest. They called me, told me to come to California. And we've been working on him for, oh, ever since I've been with the label. My uh, uh, manager and agent had been after him to do a session 
with me. So I was kind of in the back of his mind, I guess, and he let me do it. Now, new recording. Tell us about that. Uh, we, yeah, we just uh, released a new record called Still Standing Here. And uh, David Crosby sang uh, harmony with me on the title song. It's got a one song called Back Against the Wall that I wrote that kind of started this whole mess again. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's got two of, two of maybe the best two of the best country songs I think I've ever done. And it's got some R&B on it and some spiritual. And it's, it's kind of a mix of things like I, I used to do in Memphis when we in the Hooked on the Feeling days. We cut country and gospel and, and pop all in the same thing. So that's what we did this time. Hi, this is B.J. Thomas, and you're listening to John Oliver on Fraser Valley Radio.